Let's say happy hippie. How are you? Happy hippie says the witness protection program. Uh, happy hippie may be the next interview, huh? Maybe. Yeah. He was supposed to be earlier today, but when he signed up for the live stream thing on YouTube, you know how it has the rule that you have to wait 24 hours. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's another way to do it. I know eons ago, back when the dinosaurs roamed before the earth cooled, um, I had a contest um, that was like a game show. And uh, I remember Jorgen was there. And anyway, uh, I made glitter letters like uh, Price is Right. Yeah. Real cool, but anyway, <laughs> um, oh, there was a way to do it. this with there was a way to do this on just straight up YouTube, but I honestly don't remember how to do it. Well, that's a great idea. I think you, I, I was actually when I was talking to because Rod and I were on uh Facebook Messenger talking earlier today, and I just think it would be a great idea if somebody come on jenny you would know i mean if anybody would know this i would think that you would know has anybody ever had like a real tv show on their youtube channel like say they had like let's say you and dave had a weekly show you know what i mean like you remember yeah. the old you remember the old tv guides you know so i would know okay every sunday Jenny and Dave, their program comes on at whatever time, five o'clock my time. And I would tune into that as if I was watching television. But it doesn't seem like anybody really does that on YouTube, do they? Well, but for about a minute and a half, people seem to start uh, coordinating their live streams so that somebody had Monday and somebody had Tuesday and somebody did afternoon and somebody did evening. But then I think that all went out the window. So it's a free for all again, but I kind of like it being a free for all. So there you go. Uh oh, Dave's pickup artist has another joke. <laughs> we need more jokes in the world. <laughs> all right. Balding Boomer says Value Vinyl posted on Facebook last week. He's okay. And then Pre Code says, Oh, that's cool. Balding Boomer says you were the very first VC channel that he watched. Oh my that's God. awesome. Yeah. And, and Trish then, is still hanging in there. She's hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> Trish is I, I like movie. the folks that are just steady. Just keep on keeping on. Just keep on doing your thing. I love it. Okay. So how are and we going to do this? Sorry? How are we going to do this? Because this well, is I'm like... going to ask you a bunch of questions. I thought I would get oh. through the, hey, okay. uh, hey, how are you? Is first, and then we jump into some questions. Um, That's right. Scott. Red says That's that if you're looking for something like a TV show, then the Vinyl Rewind is kind of like that. And um, I think it's pretty much it. Oh, Johnny G's Vinyl Treasures. He has weekly shows. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And there you go. So the, I think we're pretty well caught up. So, okay, let's get to some serious, serious, hard-hitting questions. Oh, God. Hold on a minute. Right. Um, okay. Do you have a problem with T-shirts? Do you mostly, I mean, most of your videos. Who's your that question for? Who is that question for? Oh, for you. Yeah. <laughs> you're wearing a t-shirt, which is kind of surprising because usually you're at least sleeveless. So I, I didn't know if you had like a cotton allergy or some, is, is there something about t-shirts that's like just not happening with you? <laughs> Yeah, I live in Tucson, Arizona, where it's 120 freaking degrees out on Christmas Eve and shit. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like ridiculous hot here. So I just like to wear my uh, tank tops, you know, or sometimes I'm just freaking butt ass naked. But the good thing I about like that, that is, yes, the camera is up so you can't see anything that's below the equator. You know what I'm talking about? Thank the sweet Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah, holy cow. 
There is a God. <laughs> Rock Chica. She knows what it is. <laughs> Loretta, stop getting me turned on in the comment section. Knock it off. Uh, yeah, okay, so okay, for those of you who don't know Robert Z, which it sounds like most of the people who are in the chats already know you, uh, but for the sake of those who might be dropping by, uh, and yes, Biz, I will post Robert's channel link for you. Uh, will you tell them a little bit about like how long have you been doing in the VC or how long have you been doing videos? Because I know most of us kind of lurked for a minute. I lurked for a very long time before I started making videos, um, at least a couple of years before I started making videos. Um, wow. How long have you been hanging out around all these crazy people and how long have you been making videos? Okay, here's the story with that. I will most happily answer this for you. I don't know that, you know, you know, my personality. I don't know who I'm going to rub the wrong way or whatever. I don't really give a rat's ass, but it, this is, I'm going to give you the truth of, of how this all started for me. Once upon a time. <laughs> okay. One evening I was in my bed and I had my, uh, either it was my phone or it was my iPad, whatever, one of these kind of devices. And I was on YouTube. I knew nothing about the vinyl community. Absolutely zero, nothing. And I'm on YouTube, minding my own business, browsing around, looking for music-related information, okay? Because I'm, I collect music. Believe it or not, before I knew about the VC, I was collecting music. So I was browsing around on YouTube and I stumbled upon a vinyl community type video. You know, Jenny, I, I, I just purely by accident. And I don't want to mention anybody's names. One of the first people, I will mention this person's name because he's like my brother, for God's sakes. One of the first people I ever knew about was Rob from Boston. You know Rob Paniques? Absolutely. If you He's don't like, know Rob from Boston, you're missing out. Right. I, I, I don't know how you could not know Rob. But he was one of the first. But Rob wasn't the person I stumbled upon. But I met him soon after that. Very soon after that. Like almost immediately after that. But when I started to see VC videos, Jenny, with all due respect... Okay, I'm lying in bed. Picture it. Robert Z is watching a freaking vinyl community video. And I don't know anything about the vinyl community. You got to freaking give me something for that. I don't know anything about anything. Now, I thought that it was like satire. I was like, hold on a second. Uh, is this real? I didn't know what to make of it, honest to, honest to God. And I said, I think this person is being serious uh, showing their music collection here. What the hell is this? And then I start seeing that acronym VC, VC. What the hell is VC? And then I started seeing VCLT, which I was always one. What's VCLT? Anyway, I think Rob actually made up that term. He did. Rob actually did, in fact, make up that term. So I was. I didn't know what to make of the whole VC thing and, um, you know, trying to be polite here. I mean, I could tell you specific things that I saw that I was, I thought that it was really a Saturday night live skit. And so I, I talked to my older daughter and she said, dad, man, maybe it would be a good idea for you to, uh, make a channel on YouTube, you know, and, show some of your stuff or do whatever these people are doing and meet some people with a common interest and a common passion and all of that type of stuff. And, and so that's what I decided to do. But my daughter told me, see, and I went against this really, really, I shouldn't even be here right now, to be honest with you. She told me, she goes, dad, remember it's the worldwide cesspool. So if you have any type of issues that really get not good, you should just pull the plug and hit the road and don't even look back. Just freaking get out of town. And if there's anybody who's, and I've shared with you, I haven't gotten into the 
super deep weeds, but I had some bad where I, I should have just been like, you know, I got to go and just keep in touch with people either on Instagram or Facebook or messenger or private telephone calls or whatever, you know, but so that's pretty much was, but in the beginning, I thought the VC, I, I didn't know what to make of it. Gosh, I think the first VC person we saw was Teddy. Is that his name? Uh, I think, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a jazz guy showing his records. And then you know how you do the, um, uh, the rabbit hole where you start finding more and more people and things like that. But, um, uh, I think I've always had records. So I thought it was kind of cool. And we've always really in, or Dave and I both have always really enjoyed public access. So anything that's like people making stuff, especially when they get a little weird, it's, we're all about it. So, <laughs> uh, so would you say you've been around for, you've been around at least 10 years? Cause I know we've been around for, 10 or 11 at least um, yep. and been making kind of videos for at least nine. So yeah. I, I think you were there a couple years, maybe a couple years before us. Yeah. I so. want to say, 10, I want to say 10 years. I mean, Jenny, yeah. just to give you an example, I want to give you some type of an example because you know me now, nothing against anybody, how they do their business. But I mean, me, I, I almost needed to take one of my nitroglycerin pills. So when I tuned into one of these VC videos, a person took an album. Okay. Now, you know the seams on an album, how, how they're attached. Now, this individual took the album and opened it like this, breaking the glue. Okay. Which the glue wasn't even sealed on the seams. They opened it up like that. And they were telling their audience, and this was a serious video, mind you now. This wasn't like me doing one of my goofy Robert Z ass videos, right? This was a serious video. This person was displaying this item as if it was a legitimate gatefold. Now, this is with me watching, okay? I'm running, I'm trying to find my medicine cabinet. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Couldn't even deal with it. I was like, are these people serious or what the freak? So that's just a little example. So, so I know your your big thing is condition and uh, quality good. over quantity. So yes. it's uh, really do you, pissed off. Do you know? Let me let me interject this. Do you know who I really pissed off one time with that attitude? Do who? you remember Biosite One? Yes. Oh man, he got mad at me for that shit. He did not like my attitude where it came to uh, to the to the whole quality over quantity, you know, position. Well, I'm a I'm a dollar bin person, and I don't care if something's crusty looking. I'll buy it anyway, just so I can hear it. Uh, just right. as an exploration. I mean, I've right. got a lot of things that would probably make you have to take nit nitroglycerin pills, but yeah. I think each of us has our own way of doing things. So. Right. Sure. <laughs> um, you That's know, right. each to his own. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never have been bothered by a little uh, snap, crackle, pop. Um, so anyway, totally off subject. Uh, how many channels have you actually had? Because Bobby Z's got his numbered. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> Bobby Gas has his numbered. Um, he's on what, five? But I'm, I'm willing to bet he's had more than five. Bobby Gass. I would think that he he's had more than that too. Yeah. I have had so many crazy ass things that I just tried maybe for a little bit and then and said, nah, that ain't gonna work. Um I don't know how many total channel total channels. I mean, Carmine had his own channel once, and um I had a channel that was entitled the elitist of uh, the um uh, Elite, what the hell was the name of that channel? The, uh, oh, the Elitist Institute for Assholes. That was the name of the channel. Because somebody got really pissed off at me. I mean, really, really pissed off. Not in a joking manner. I've had a lot of people get very, very pissed off with me around here. I mean, you would not believe it. And uh, this was an individual that I was actually friends with before this. And he went off on a freaking rant 
on me calling me an elitist this a prick or that or this who do i think i am i need to freaking you know this that and the other thing so as a result of that encounter with him i created the uh elitist institute for assholes with carmine i would have to say probably total channels has got to be at least 10 has to be wow that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> but it also makes it really hard for people to follow you around from place to place, sometimes I'd say, which I mean, I know at least one of your channels had over 2K subscribers, right? No, I think you most, had one that was way up. The most I ever had, Jenny, in my life, since I've been annoying everybody around here, the most I have ever had was, I'm going to say ballpark, 1,250. So, you know, 1250. I never even reached 1500 in my life. Never. Wow. So. Well, see, I thought you had way more than that. Or maybe it was because it was earlier on in the VC and having a thousand subs seemed like a oh. monumental thing. And then all of a sudden you were just gone. Uh, but yeah, well, I mean, you, see, the you first had time, your fair share of turmoil and uh, the trolls first time. deluxe. <laughs> So see the first time, Jenny, the first time that I deleted my 1250, whatever it was, subscriber channel was the most serious thing. Mm -hmm. I had to have a talk with Betty about it and, <laughs> and people wouldn't, I, I don't want to get into the, you know, there was, there were actually a police report that was filed mm -hmm. because of that. it was very, very bad. Yeah. It I remember all of that. Right. That was um, uh, that was a troll beyond any of the trolling I've seen other than that ever. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. But um, yeah. anyway, so it looks like uh, Mike is right there with you on your opinion of the quality over quantity. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll say in my own defense, most of the most of my reason for that is that Usually it seems like uh, thrift stores, I can afford a lot of music in thrift stores. So that's probably why I've just never really had been a stickler for it because brand new stuff always seems expensive. Uh, oh, but these days I'll have a sale so that I can get a grail and uh, try to yeah. make this collection a little smaller and replace some things with something a little bit nicer. So I'm, I'm getting there little by little, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to quit digging in the dollar bins. <laughs> yeah. And you shouldn't because that's what makes you happy. That's what, that's what it should all be about. Ultimately is, you know, if you're happy, then that's what is important period. You know? yeah. And then uh balding boomer asked what happened to Memphis Jim. Memphis Jim was another one that uh, when uh, he was on, that was one of the first people that we saw actually have troubles because of being on YouTube had somebody, he did like a room tour and it was like just a day or two after his room tour, he got robbed. Now it could be because he lives in Memphis, but <laughs> uh, I don't know that it uh, was really helpful for him to guide people around his home. Uh, that that probably didn't help things much anyway, or at least it that kind of put a bit of hesitation on our part. And as far as like showing everything, you think about how many people are watching and how many cuckoo birds are out there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I totally understand when you uh, say that uh, your daughter was wise in saying when something is crazy, get out while the getting's good. I don't blame you for that one bit. Uh, here's a good question. Randy asked if you're a general in the Air Force. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I retired as a master sergeant. Not a general. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Just use your address as your... You, <laughs> there you go. That's totally safe. <laughs> All right. No, I don't know. Um, at Balding Boomer, I have no idea what happened to Memphis Jim. I know he shows up every once in a blue moon, though. Uh, just like out of nowhere and then he's gone again for months and months years even so uh rock chica says she's in both camps she wants quantity of quality nice um let's see because he's using a laptop that'd be my guess <laughs> I'm a magician. all right so let's see my next question for you stand by 
Um, I made a list, but that doesn't mean I'm sticking with it. Um, here's, here's, Dave says, you're not sticking with your list at all. That's okay, though. Um, one thing that not a whole lot of people probably know, if they haven't been watching you for very long, is that you do magic tricks. Uh, tell us about how you got involved in magic and where you perform. Well, that's a very nice question. Um, well, when I was a teenager a million years ago, there was a guy in my neighborhood that used to perform magic at various functions, you know. And uh, he was a really good friend of, of our family. So, of course, I would watch him perform here and there. And I got, I, I got a very serious interest in it. And he kind of took me under his wing and guided me into that you know and uh it kind of took off from there so and while i was in the air force active duty i used to perform for different people and different occasions like if a squadron say had a christmas party they would have like a squadron christmas party say uh you know some type of a big function or whatever and they would say hey robert could you come and uh do some stuff for the you know, the people I invited or this or that. So I would do that, you know, or I would go over, people would have a dinner party at their house and they would ask me to come over and perform in the living room. So, but nowadays, which I can't even really do anymore, which is really disappointing and kind of sad because of this whole uh, COVID, I was going around to the independent living, assisted living communities, you know, for the uh, senior citizens. And I would get with the activity directors at these various places and they would schedule me to come to their facility and I would set up and I would do a routine for them. They, they absolutely loved it. You know, they would have a ball with it because it's very hands on. I get them. I get the audience very involved with what I'm doing. So it's a lot of fun for them. I'll bet they have a blast with it. Oh, I like seeing that. I like seeing what else people do besides just records because people are more than just one facet. So I think that's kind of cool. There's another guy who I don't know if you know, uh, Sean, the vinyl minimalist was I think his first name, but I think he has a different name every time I go over there. He juggles, so uh, I think that's cool too. <laughs> but oh, wow. anyway, I, I like seeing uh, people's other skills, other fun things that they do. Right. So that's yeah. awesome. And let's say, hang on a second. We got a question. Since Rob does magic and different characters on his channel, does he ever do theater or perform artistically in any other way? He does theater. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and tell him. <laughs> <laughs> you mean about my cousins? Yes. Tell him about your cousins. <laughs> I've known Thump, Mr. Thumpfinger. Boy, I remember his channel from years and years and years ago. Holy cow. Man alive. Yeah, but yeah, there's Carmine, you know, and then there's Sylvia. And then there's Billy Bob. So, yeah, things get interesting once in a while if I, if an idea strikes me. <laughs> I need a new wig, though. Yeah, uh, it's been a while since you've let let it fly with your characters so yeah, that <laughs> um, has been. I, uh, I always know you're getting real revved up when you get multiple characters going on <laughs> <laughs> so there's mike he said that uh he was kind of an amateur magician as a kid that's cool that's his awesome got one of those kits but hasn't done it for decades i had uh one of those uh a ventriloquist dummy that was <laughs> from uh saving up bazooka joe uh rappers but I was terrible at that. That was probably shouldn't have happened. But anyway, there you go. I kind of wish are I still you, had it, though. Are you telling me that you don't know how to do a magic trick, Jenny? No, no. <laughs> Hang on. We got to. That's the best comment right there. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Randy's got another question for you. Oh. He already answered that. <laughs> no, I wish I would have been a general just for the retirement. There you go. <laughs> All right. 
So uh, let me ask you this question because most of us, uh, I mean, you can see you've got records behind you, but we also know that you love your CDs, especially the uh, imports and, you know, promos and things like that. Which, uh, if you had to choose a format, which one would you choose? I mean, if you had to just like whittle it down to one, CDs or vinyl? Oh, wow. That's very interesting. Oh. Thank goodness you don't have to really choose. <laughs> I would have to say vinyl. Yeah. Really? I, I, yeah, I would have to say that because, you know, there's just too much that. Like so here's a question then, because I'm kind of surprised by that, because I imagined that because of our previous conversations, that most of that vinyl is still sealed. No. So, no? Okay. That's just the impression I get, because we're always talking about how you should open that vinyl. You should open it. Break yeah. that seal. You should do it. So we're always giving you crap about that. Um, yeah, I love, so I figured... I I figured you mostly listened to the CDs and just left the record sealed. Oh, <laughs> so no. I guess I was wrong about that. <laughs> I mean, I do have sealed albums for sure. Like a lot of my MoFi's are sealed. Uh oh. There's the next and question. These right over here. I could turn this and show you. You see all these? Yeah. In this one tube, those are all sealed. Now, have you been lit paying attention to all the hullabaloo about the MoFi's? No, what's the problem? Oh, my goodness. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Dave said, are you sure you want to tell him? <laughs> um, they say that, I guess, was it since 2015? At least since 2015, all of the source material has been digital and not analog, as has been, like, what was touted this whole time was that it was the truest source and all that. Uh, so... Now people are saying, are MoFi's really worth what you're paying for them if they're actually from digital sources? Does that shake you at all, or do you care? Since what year are people saying this was the case? I think it was 2015. I'm going to see if somebody else says anything in the comments, but I think that's what they were saying. But yeah, there's a lot of people all heated about it, uh, whether or not the price that you're paying is worth it if it's not if it's been sold under false pretenses. 2015 says Mike. Holy cow. I'm just wondering. <laughs> I mean, is that going to generate any kind of lawsuits or anything against them? Seriously. I mean, you've got you've got mega collectors out there that have spent a lot of money. Now, if it's only been since 2015, how many years ago was that? Only seven. So I'd have to look all that up. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are incredibly cranked up about this. So if you happen to be trolling around the... It's, it's a raging debate. Absolutely. Now, here's a, a familiar face. Hang on a second. There's Dick's Lamb Farm. Hang on just a minute. Let me get the previous... There we go. Technically, our ears and brain are digital. Hmm. Especially if I pick them with my fingers. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with digital, but I also don't have a problem with dollar bin records. So, But I'm also not one who's going to be picking up MoFi's because uh, if it comes, I usually look at uh, the cost of the original versus the cost of a MoFi versus the cost of Record Store Day. And I go with the cheapest one in the best condition I can get it for the cheapest price. So that's not going to bother me too much. And it seems like most things are digitally recorded, I would say, since 2015. The majority of it is digitally recorded anyway, isn't it? So I don't know that it makes that big of a difference, but yeah. It's it may to you. He thinks you're not going to be bothered much. No, I don't think I'm going to be bothered much either. Because what's what's I'm finding interesting about what you're saying is the year. Mm -hmm. See, I'm looking I'm looking at the year that you're talking about. So in other words, you mean to tell me that <laughs> 
all of these one steps. Do, are, are you familiar with what a one step is? No. These, these very fancy, expensive MoFi box set one steps that they're coming out with now is uh is is falling into that category. Is that the case though? I'd be I interested. don't know. Yeah, some of you folks in the uh in the chats may know better than I do. Uh but he Aaron is asking if we think it'll affect resale value. Possibly could. But well, I don't I know. It'll be a curiosity. And I, I kind of think from now here on forward, they'll probably have to put some kind of stamp on it that says what source material it is. Although I'm, I would also be curious how many people since 2015 have actually recorded analog rather than digital anyway. But anyway, it's a curiosity. And it was something I was dying to ask you if you had uh, okay, gotten so all involved in this topic. Yeah. No, I haven't gotten involved with that. Maybe I'll go on YouTube and look to see what the professional music collectors out there are talking, you know, discussing about this. If I can get my comedy in as well. But um, there you go. Randy says the silver mofas are the digital ones. I can't get into this here because I will okay. start going off on. Listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. I will start going off on a tangent. That you won't even be able to believe with this. So hey, if you have other, what we do. yeah, if we if we have other questions, but no, okay, so back to you. <laughs> uh, oh, but one more question. This is for from Red. Where and when did you buy your P A R I pressings? And I have no idea what that even means. Oh, pare. He's talking about Philippine Filipino uh, pressings, and while I was in the Philippines. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was stationed at Clark Air Base in the Philippines for four years. So I got them there. Okay. Now, what I heard, now let me just interject this about the MoFi thing. See, do you know who I wish was here is Baraka P. Dub. Yes. Because he is an extremely, extremely knowledgeable, smart man where it comes to all this stuff. Paul? Mm -hmm. And uh, Dead Wax 66 was at Clark Air. You were at Clark also. That's very interesting. When were you at Clark, Mr. Dead Wax 66? When were you at Clark? <laughs> <laughs> and you made it world. out alive? It's a but small anyway, world. Yeah. Oh, who is this Dead Wax 66 character? Does he have That's a channel? Randy. Right? Oh, okay. Randy's awesome. Oh, good. I'm close. So am I. So we would get along <laughs> like fucking two peas in a pod, wouldn't we? 88 you to would. 80. You were, at, you were at Clark at 88 to 89. Were you there, Randy? That's when I was there too. But I was there longer than that. I left in 89. What were you doing at Clark? Going short time? Huh? Was your dick dripping? What was going on over there? All right. It looks like uh, Paul mentioned all this in one of his recent videos. So we'll have to yeah, jump in on that and see what yeah. he has to say. Because I, I agree with you. He'll probably have some great Red things horse. to say about that. Yeah. Where does Red right. Wax 66 live? Where's he uh, live? Michigan. Where you live? Hey, Randy, where do you live? Where do you live, Randy? <laughs> where do you live? You were, oh, you were TDY from Korea. Holy cow, we actually let you in? What base were you at in Korea? You live in Michigan. i never been to Michigan. I may fly up there just personally to visit your ass. So you what should. Base, He's awesome. What, <laughs> I know, he loves me. I, you know, I actually have a list. Uh, I, I, I got to get, oh, son, I was at, <laughs> yeah, I got to hang out with Randy. Okay, I'm anyway, probably but, in some trouble, I'd imagine. Yeah, we would get in a lot of trouble. Go ahead. Okay, so my other questions for you. Let's see. I asked you that. I asked you that. Oh my goodness, am I gonna run out of my sheet of questions? Um, okay, you like to put the CDs in the uh sleeves, like the Blake sleeves. 
Somebody told me that dates me in the VC when I call them Blake's leaves. You know what I mean? The Blake's leaves. Yeah. Where do you get CD Blake's leaves? Well, they're not actually Blake's leaves. They're rice paper sleeves. Where do you get those suckers? You used to be able to get them at Music Direct. Do you know Music okay. Direct in Chicago? Okay. I'll look them up. But for I think we've reason, always gotten sleeves from Bags Unlimited, I think. But Music Direct, I'll look them up. Baldy yeah, Boomer said he got them on Amazon. Yeah. Okay, or you, cool. Or That's do a you completely know, off the subject thing to ask you, but there you go. <laughs> and then you let's know, see. Go hmm? ahead. No, no. Say, the, do you know the plastic CD inner sleeves that usually the Japanese CDs come in? Yeah. You can get those just on Amazon, and those are very nice, too. Okay. Have you ever used the book? Have you ever put them in a book, all your CDs? Just take them. <laughs> your eyes got all big. That cracks me up. <laughs> no. No books. <laughs> no books. <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> uh, I've had mine in books. I've had them in the in all manner of uh, situations that would probably give you heart palpitations. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah. I I got a, a CD the other day that looked pristine. Could not get that thing to quit skipping, and I was like, "How come I have all these CDs that are just scratched all the crap that play just fine, and this one's all perfect and it still skips." It does. It's crazy. strange. Anyway. All right. Who would you like to see return to the VC? Oh, wow. That's a very good question. I would like to see. Uh, well, let me just mention this. Is, uh, is Paul still making videos? I think he is, but just not as not as often. I would like to see Shannon, who used to be Light Breeze 55. Now, I don't uh, know Light Breeze 55. Oh, wow. Really? You never knew Shannon? No, I don't from... know how. I miss them. Uh, and LJ, who I mentioned before, LJ was Biosite 1. Yeah, you know, he hasn't he been was... around in forever. Uh, when you when you start thinking of it, it kind of floods back tons of people who have just kind of disappeared. Oh wow, it's yeah, it's pretty like Steve Value Vinyl. I don't know where Steve went. Yeah, I think I he just kind of got done a little bit. Maybe he was just at the peak of what records he wanted. But it's an interesting thing to think about people who you've known in the past, especially when you've been around as long as as you have, or as long as. I, we both have. Uh, what advice would you give to a new collector? I know a lot of people want to say, don't get a Crosley, whatever you do, and things like that. Everybody has to give their two cents on advice for the new vinyl people. Uh, so what would you tell them? <laughs> what would I tell a new vinyl collector? Uh, I would... <laughs> I mean, it sounds, I don't know how it sounds really, but to me, the priority should be that they just have fun. I would, I would have them keep in mind that they're going to get advice from this person. They're going to get advice from that person and they, they should do their own research and homework and, and, and all, and take things into consideration. But as far as an absolute bottom line, absolute bottom line i would say is just to uh have fun just have enjoy yourself however which way you find pleasure like you mentioned before people find pleasure they go to the dollar bins they like to go hunting in the thrift store they or what have you um there are other people who i knew you know like i have this reputation for being this anal person and stuff i'm really not as bad as i come across with in that regard though that's all an act i'm not actually a music collector at all i'm a gynecologist but i'm just see like all of this shit behind me here i have to return after our interview is over but um so just have fun is is what i would say you didn't know i was a gynecologist jenny 
I did not know that, <laughs> but I had a suspicion. <laughs> All right, my last question for you. Oh my God. Hang on, I'm making sure that I've. Uh... Okay. Uh, my last, it's I'm so making sure I didn't have any other questions off on the side that I missed. And if I did miss a good question from you guys, I apologize. Uh, but I have a funny feeling other people will be interviewing him for his contest. His contest is to interview him on a live stream. Uh, and he's pushing for 1,750 subs. Exactly that number. No more, no less. Right. So <laughs> y'all jump on over there and I'll put a, a link to his channel uh, in the description if I can't figure out how to put it in the comments without jumping off of my own live stream here. <laughs> uh, so my last very hard hitting question for you is, <clears throat> when did you first realize that you were madly in love with Madonna and does Betty mind? Uh, I don't think Betty bides. I'll answer that for, I don't think she bides because she thinks I'm just freaking, you know, out of my mind with, with half the shit I do anyway. Cause she's wise. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. She's a, she's a very wise woman. I think probably, I don't know, Madonna. I think it was when the album like a virgin came out. I think it was then. So it was that year because I remember being in Las Vegas for the very first time and they would play that song on the radio, you know, promoting the song. And I said, man, I love Madonna. But now I think I'm in love with Lady Gaga. Oh, my goodness. Well, now now Madonna's going to be jealous. Yeah, I know. She's going to get pissed. Oh, there's an even better question. When did you first realize you were madly in love with Betty? And does Madonna mind? <laughs> I don't think Madonna will ever know. <laughs> Betty and oh, I. And then, Richard, yeah, who isn't in love with Madonna? <laughs> it's a fair question for you. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Question. So that's that's all the questions I came up with, and oh, I know wow. that's not not a ton but at the same time i figured we would probably jump on a million tangents and would be talking forever uh because that's what we do anyway and uh i want to leave something for other people to ask you although i'm sure other people will ask you some of the same questions again <laughs> yeah. yeah maybe but you know what I, i'm very curious about something that you had brought up though about the magic oh really because you really don't know how to do a magic trick? No. Nope. You mean Okay, Jenny, seriously, when you were a, when you were a little girl or you're in your younger days or what have you, maybe in the schoolyard or during lunch period or whatever the case, you never learned how to do a magic trick? Never. No, we whole... made like the little cootie catcher things out of like the origami things that would tell you like your fortune and stuff like that, but I never oh, did. Oh yeah. Oh, I remember that. That doesn't count as a magic trick, though. <laughs> yeah, wow. You never learn. I find that so hard to believe. I always thought that everybody at least knew how to do a magic Can Okay, so can I ask you this, then? I want to see if you'll mind. Do, okay. would you mind. Would you mind very much, like right now, if... I can do that. <laughs> it, it, would you mind if, if I did like an experiment with you to see if you actually do know how to do a magic trick? Because I really believe that you know how to do a magic trick. Okay. You've got, I mean, everybody usually knows how to do a magic trick, right? Can sure. we do an experiment? So you're open to that? Sure. Okay. So let me, sh I'm going to show you this now. It's very easy. It's nothing complicated because I really believe that you're capable of doing this. All right. Do you see this envelope? Yes. So we're in real time, right? You can you can yeah. see this. Is, is there a delay or anything? I don't think so. Okay. Now, this is a pretty common kind of envelope that you get in Office Max or anything. You know these kind, right, Jenny? Yes. All right. Now, the reason I have this is because I have something in it. Now, have you ever seen jumbo, jumbo-sized playing cards? Mm-hmm. You have seen those. Yes, I'm going to show because I have them. Yeah, that's why I had I have to have this this huge envelope 
where can I put this? Just over here. I'll block my... Can you still see me? No. See, that's the trick. <laughs> All right. Let me just... You disappeared. Over... Amazing. <laughs> I'm going to leave this over here on my lap because I want to show you the jumbo size playing cards that were in there. See how big they are? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're familiar with this size. Okay. Sure. That's great. That's great. Now, I just want... Now, they're red, but who cares? You know, the, the bat, we don't care about what color. I'm going to put the envelope on my table over there. Let me, let me get better situated here. So do you know what the name of this card is? Uh, seven of Puppy Feet. Seven of Clubs, right? We puppy could call feet. it Puppy Feet. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I have... The seven of clubs, and and then what is this? A jack of hearts. That's right. Look at you, Jenny. I can't Jenny. call it anything else weird. <laughs> right. Well, what is if this? I, could, I would. The three what of spades. Is that? The three of spades. So you are absolutely familiar with these cards, right? You know their names. Right? Right. Yes. Okay. And remember... You know, not that, I mean, I really don't care. They're they're just, I just want to make sure that you see that they're red, okay? And we have three, right? This is, okay. I, I still prefer doing this in person. You have no idea. Yeah. Now, now, Jenny, me and you are going to do an experiment because I want to see if you actually know how to do a magic trick. And this is a long distance magic trick, Jenny. This okay. is from, this is from me in Arizona to you in Tennessee, okay? okay? Now, this is what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to take off my glasses, okay? All right? Now, I get more handsome when I take off my glasses, so please try to stay in control of yourself, and I certainly hope Dave is home. I don't want to get arrested. Okay, so now, listen. Serious up, will you please? Okay, now, I got the seven of clubs, the jack of hearts, and the three of spades here, Jenny, which you already named. I am going to close my eyes and I am going to think, concentrate very, very hard on one of these three cards. I'm going to be concentrating and I'm going to send that thought strictly to you. You are going to receive it within your Jenny mind. You're going to hear a little Robert Z whispering to you the name of one of these cards. Okay? Okay. Did you, did you understand all of that? Yes. Good. For sure. <laughs> now I'm going to begin. I'm going to begin. I'm going to close my eyes. And I'm thinking of one of these three cards right now and long distance passing it it's going it's on the interstate it's going tennessee it's at that really little rinky dink post office you've got there close to your house and now did you hear me whispering in your jenny head one of these cards i think you so yeah. you did hear it jenny right yeah. did you hear it I know. So now which one of these three cards did you hear me whispering to you? The seven of clubs. That's absolutely correct. Holy cow, the woman is a marvel. That's right. Jenny, you're amazing at this. It was the seven of clubs. And here, ladies and gentlemen, who is ever still here, okay? This woman was trying to tell you that she did not know how to do a magic trick. And she just proved to you that she is the queen of cards. The seven of clubs. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> I, I knew she was. How about that? <laughs> but, you're saying, but you're saying, Jenny, where's the proof, Robert? You're being ridiculous. Where's the proof that you whispered the seven of clubs to me, right? It's right over here, Jenny. Remember my envelope? You will choose the seven of clubs. Ooh. 
You're amazing. You're good. I think I think he wrote that with his feet while we were talking. I did. I have my Sharpie down here. Yep. I guess so you very dexterous with those toes. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Oh, God. how did he do that? <laughs> I have no idea. It's all done with mirrors. It's all done with mirrors and fishing line or some shit. That's what somebody once told me. <laughs> well, Robert Z, it's been a blast having you here, and thank you for coming and interviewing with me, so I could enter your contest and win fabulous prizes. Because I didn't yeah. want you to have a contest and not have somebody win something, right? Oh, and did you see my latest video regarding the contest? Uh-uh. Or I thought I saw one earlier, but there may be a uh, more recent one yet. Well, Jenny, I decided to have three winners. Oh, that's right, with the booby prize or the zonk prize. I'm all right. about the zonk prize. I'm down for the zonk. So you're my only contestant so far that has entered, so... You know, there's a good chance of you getting the grand prize, so that's great. Oh, and tell Dead Dead Wax sixty six Randy that I love him. <laughs> yeah, well, he's never probably know still how. on here. <laughs> People never know. They're like, hold on a second, man. Did Robert take his medication this morning? What the? F you know, I actually do have to take medication. I really do. You never asked me about that, though. Maybe someone else will ask me about that. They probably will. <laughs> Anyway, it's really great hanging out with you, and you're welcome to hang out a little bit more if you want to. I honestly have had difficulty saving these streams, so I'm hoping I can figure that part out. And if I can't, then you had to be here. But if I can, then I'll save it as a video. Wow, that would be cool. Yeah. But I'm notoriously crappy at technology, so um, I'll see what I can do. And if I can't, then I apologize. But if I can, then yay. <laughs> oh, and that's no problem. I, I'm going to start a list now, and you'll, of course, be the first person on it of who has entered. So, Well, it's been great having you here. And I hope that you'll be on uh, your own channel regularly. And I never did post that link, so let me see if I can do that really quick. or not i'm not sure if i can hey randy i got more than that from clark air force base i got news for you baby holy cow osan i used to love going into <laughs> osan air base korea you know what there's gotta be there has the me being alive is proof positive that there is some type of deity <laughs> 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 Because there's no reason I should be alive. I'm telling you right now. But anyway. Um, well, hang on a second. I got this link for you here. Copy. And I'm jumping back over here. And I'm pasting it. There you go. You guys jump on over there. Sub him up. Help him get to 1,750 subs. Oh we'll God, see what happens. I pushed my records back. Okay. Now, I'm going to let Elizabeth back up if you'd like. Is Elizabeth going to interview me? I'm sorry? 